After fighting for England in the Boer War, my great-grandfather eventually made his way to Australia. He would hold a number of jobs and meet his future wife, Agnes, during this time. When Australia declared war on the 4th of August 1914, he signed up as soon as he could. Hoping to be the first man to sign, he arrived at the recruitment office at 4 a.m., only to find 84 other men in front of him. He was assigned to the 4th Light Horse Regiment due to his previous cavalry experience and was to leave Australia almost immediately. He hastily wrote a letter to Agnes asking for her hand in marriage. Jack secured leave and they were wed at 11 a.m. on the 7th of September 1914. Their honeymoon would last the length of the walk from the Sydney Registry Office to the wharf where Jack boarded his ship and departed for the war. They would not see each other for over four years. His first stop was Egypt where he received further training before being deployed to Gallipoli. He would serve two duties in Gallipoli, being medically evacuated and then sent back to survive until the final evacuation in the December of 1916. He had many close calls and lost many friends at Gallipoli. He carried shrapnel from a bomb blast in his skull for the rest of his life. From Gallipoli, Jack would spend years as part of the Desert Mounted Corps in the Sinai and Palestine campaign. It was during this time that he took part in a most famous battle. Just before evening fell, the 4th and 12th White Horse decided to mount a daring charge on the city of Bathsheba. The water held in the wells of the city was crucial for the survival of the army due to the desert condition. The charge was the final hope for the battle. Jack charged with the rest of the regiment. However, he noticed an enemy machine gun being hastily put in position on the flank of the charge. This had the potential to cause massive casualties. Turning his horse 90 degrees, he charged the machine gun crew and arrived just before they began to fire. He injured the officer and took the crew captive. His actions were recognised as saving numerous lives and he was awarded the Distinguished Conduct Medal. He returned to Australia after the war and lived out his days in Sydney with his wife Agnes. This is just a small part of his story and some of the reasons that I consider my great-grandfather a hero.